right, so we've got three-time LPGA Tour winner, Christina Kim with me, and we're here at the practice session of the interview now, talking about the range, pre-round warm-up. And for Christina, for you, um, when we get to the range and you see us amateurs, us weekend hacks, we show up to the range, how should we loosen up our body? Well, I would say the first thing that I've noticed is you're going to come in, you're going to be there probably 10, 12 minutes before your tee time, you just grab your driver and start wailing away. I think that <laughs> the best way for just golfers in general, for the most part, is to start off with some wedges and to just really work on your tempo and your rhythm and just really working on where and how your ball, your club is bottoming out. So I would say, you know, especially since, you know, if you're at like, you know, a normal range that doesn't have say pro V ones, um, you know, I would say, you know, grab a couple of the less perfect, least new balls out there and just work on hitting just a couple of pitches just to get your body warmed up, just to feel your body starting to move and slowly, gradually work your way up. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing that you'll see most tour players, you know, if we're not starting up on an actual, whoops, um, on an actual short game area like a chipping or something like that. We'll throw some balls down on the range and we'll just start hitting some wedge shots just to get the body um, moving, just to get our rhythm going and, you know, just to, just to sort of just loosen up, I guess. And then from there, you know, you got to hit a couple of irons. You can't just start swinging and wailing away on your driver. I don't, I used to do that when I was younger, to be honest, because I was always very strong, very flexible, and I just loved hitting drivers. So, you know, I was a very unique situ case in that way. Um, and, you know, I was always very, very accurate with my driver. So I never really worried about, um, you know, hitting it offline. And the older I've gotten, the more experience I've had, the more importance I've been able to put on my wedge game. So, you know, just starting off, just, you know, I mean, even if you were just to hit at the end of the, uh, the T area, just to, you know, it's all about timing, all about just getting that flow going. And then you can move into a short iron, mid iron, long iron, and kind of go from there. And then, you know, once your body is fully warmed up and you're loose and relaxed, which clearly since I'm pouring sweat right now here in Florida is not, does not take very long, then you can start wailing on your driver. Gotcha. Here, I, um, what happened to my screen here? I, my screen disappeared because my wife had a phone call. Um, stand by. <laughs> no worries. What are the odds? Um, yeah, who would have thought your phone would have, or your, your stuff would have conked out before mine did? Yeah, I know. All good. Let's see. Um, Zoom, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. And for overall, for you, for timing, what's the overall length and focus of your pre round warm up, Christina? Well, I warm up for about an hour. You know, personally, before I even go to the range, I'm on the putting green and working on um, short putts. You know, like I'll set down a chalk line or I'll put down some tees or some ball markers or something like that just to get my eyes seeing what a straight putt looks like because realistically every single day your eyes can look a little bit differently so in order to you know really train your eyes even if you were to take an alignment stick and put it down so that you can always stand square to it and you can get your putter head you know uh, perpendicular to that you can get an idea of really seeing what square is and from there you know, the rest of the game starts to feel a little bit easier because if you know what square is, you'll know what square is with your irons, with your driver, all of that stuff. So I actually start by about, you know, hitting putts for about 15, 20 minutes. Then I go to the range for about a half an hour. 
and then I'll go and work on a couple speed putts right before I tee off. And then right before I actually go on and head to the tee, I always finish with six putts made. Three footers, five footers, eight footers. There's no real, um, you know, rhyme or reason. You know, if I'm putting great, I'll hit six, eight footers in a row. And if I feel like, you know what, I just really need to focus on seeing a ball go in the hole, I'll go to three feet. I'll go to two feet, whatever it may be. And then I'll have those thoughts of, boom, I made six putts in a row. Let's get going. And that I'm sure is a good thing for amateurs to know just to get that confidence. Um, but there's anxiety that comes for us weekend hacks too. Like think about it. Like uh, in the last couple minutes before we actually have to tee off, are, are we thinking, okay, you should hit your driver as much as you can because you know that's your first shot you're going to hit. Or is it more about, like you say, the putting and you know, getting that confidence there? Well, if I'm being perfectly honest, um, the last club that I do hit is my driver when I'm on the range. And I, you know, I'll have like 10 to 12 minutes before my tee time when I go over to the putting green. I think that, um, you know, reaffirming to yourself how... I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's usually about 45, 42 to 47% of your strokes come on the putting green. And so if you feel comfortable with your putts, you can start to feel more comfortable with every club in your bag. So I would say hit a couple drives. I always finish with two perfect drives. Hold your finish. Pretend like you're having like a fancy little photo shoot. And then you know, really pay attention to what it is that you're doing because it's all about quality, not about quantity. So, you know, you can sit there and wail away at eight drives in six minutes, or you can sit there and hit five really good ones in that same amount of time and actually learn more and get a better feel for what it is that you're actually doing when you're hitting your driver. Hmm. You mentioned a little bit of alignment, uh, of course, your alignment rod. Um, how, how much of that do amateurs need to get in that 12 minutes, like you talk about when they get to the course, how much of kind of training aids alignment do they need to be working on? I mean, honestly, you could have one alignment stick in your bag and it can, it can be a wonderful multitasker. I'm not a huge fan of unitaskers. If you're the kind of person that, you know, wants to use a chalk line, you can use a chalk line on the putting green where you get grab like a five foot putt that's dead straight, put down the chalk line get your uh, putt with the, the, the ball right over the middle of the chalk line, hit some putts. And then also you can leave that there for other people on the golf, uh, on the, on the putting green to utilize. Same thing. You can put a chalk line down where you want your feet to go, or you can even put a chalk line down um, where you want your, you know, if you're going to pick one specific target and hit all of your shots at, and then it'll give you an idea of being able to see what square is that way. Um, so realistically, you only really need one, solid aid um, and I think you can either debate between an alignment stick or a chalk line because they can be used in so many ways you can have them you know coming out here you can have them uh, coming perpendicular to your stance like there's any number of things that you can do in that regard that'll help with alignment uh, but when it comes to all this anxiety we feel as weekend hacks uh, when it comes to bunker shots I mean we if we only have 12 minutes 13 minutes we may not even get to a bunker shot, but if we do carve out two or three minutes, how can we best get rid of that anxiety for bunker shots when we get into a round? Well, I would say, again, first and foremost, don't come to the course with 12 minutes before your tee time. Enjoy the process of warming up. Enjoy being out on the driving range. You know, it doesn't have to feel like such a chore. Um, and, you know, what you could do real quick is if you're in a bunker, and let's just say this is a bunker because it is pretty sandy, you can just draw a line um, perpendicular to the target. And you can just, you know, take a step back because you're going to have a decent length line and just, you know, pretend like the ball is over here and then just really try and get the bottom of the club to bottom out, you know, that inch, inch and a half, two inches, depending on what kind of shot that you're playing behind the ball. 
so you can really feel where your club is bottoming out and 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 when you're using your bounce um you know more often than not i see a lot of amateurs that they'll you know be in a bunker and they'll they'll just get they'll they'll get really steep and really stabby you know whereas if you were to take you know, i'm using my eight iron here just so you could see you know the the, the loft there if you were to open open up your body open up the club face and uh, let me see a really good drill that i would suggest which might be hard to see is if you're in the bunker you grab some sand uh, so you grab some sand set up to your shot and i want you to feel like you keep the sand on the club face for as long as you can and you want to feel like you're going to get the sand and throw it over your shoulder because that's going to be able to get your hands open and the club face open so you can really scoop underneath the ball so you want to be like this and then you want to flick the sand over your left shoulder if you're a right-handed golfer um, so that could help you with just the overall motion of it you kind of want to you know you it's like if you're standing here you know a regular shot you're just trying to get the toe pointed to the sky in the bunker you want to feel like you're really rotating that left hand you want to get that that logo of your glove almost pointed at the sky mm. and then from there you'll be able to just you see how much loft there is coming in and you'll be able to use the bounce and get the ball coming up straight up and use the bounce which will allow you to get that nice thump through the grass as opposed to the which i see so often the chunk down on it, or even uh, there's a lot of blading, <laughs> blading it issues for us too. Thinning well, it out of that bunker. Yeah, I um, you know, I, I think that you know by having that, and another thing is to always try and be wide, and again, where where you have that line that you either draw with your your um, club or you draw with your alignment stick, and another thing is you can even practice it when you're out. On the range you know you just set up you want the ball just a you know you want the ball forward in your stance and you want to feel that motion and then you want to feel the club because you want to have the ball forward so then if you know where your ball is or your club is bottoming out you'll really be able to sit there and say okay i know i've got to keep the ball forward in my stance open my stance a little bit and then just really feel that motion and you know really just kind of I would say a lot of times, one thing I see a lot of amateurs do is they don't finish their swing, especially in bunkers. Mm. The most important thing to do is to always have smooth acceleration and to always try and finish your swing out of a bunker shot. Get to that pose like you were talking about with the driver, right? <laughs> exactly. You just want to post up and be like, everybody take my picture. Good stuff. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's perfect for the instruction stuff aspect awesome. of the interview here.